2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. With Professor John Fraschetti, all about things happening in the world of education. This week, I'm very intrigued about what he's talking about. It's screens, the online world, John. What's happening? It's very different than when we went to school. It certainly is. If you remember back in the day we went to school, probably if you had to do any research for a project, mm -hmm. your teacher reserved a space in the library. That place we used to go where there were books. Remember that place? I, I, I have some <laughs> recollection of it. Yep. So we used to reserve space and maybe you went down for an hour, worked with a group, pulled out maybe the Britannica uh, but the L was missing, and so your whole project was blown because somebody had borrowed the L. Well, that's why you had to run into the library first. You yeah. had to plan ahead. Yeah. I need L for whatever, and then you just grab that book, and then you'd hold it for the entire time. So lesson. you're showing you're educated in the 20th century, and yeah. learners today can write in their pocket, write in their purse, write in their hand, have devices which allow them to take them to any library in the world, and are multimedia centers, multi-sensory production lab laboratories that can create video and audio and upload stuff, and even have video conferences to anyone in the world. So bring your own device is the, is the term that we're using to having students enable themselves right in their own hand to be in their own library. You know, I got the, the shock of my life last week. I visited my eight-year-old niece and she was talking about going to school and they're all on iPads. You go into school and, oh, what did you do today? Well, we're all on the iPads today. Oh, okay, that's great. But did anybody write anything? No, no, we're all on the iPads and learning about the online world. So it, it's a huge change. But you were saying before we started, John, some schools are holding back, resisting the technology. So in Australia, about 40 to 50 percent of schools are actually enabling students to have the BYID initiative, which means you bring your own device to school. That could be a tablet, that could be your smartphone, something which connect to the internet. You connect to the school's wireless system and you can have right in front of you this amazing learning laboratory. Other schools are a little hesitant, and there's a couple reasons why. The infrastructure has to work. If you get 500 kids all pinging the Internet, it better work. Also, there's worries about the dark side of the Internet, which has in it all the vile and creepy stuff that mm. makes it a very sort of scary place for parents to trust that their kids will be going safely. So some schools have locked those parts down, only enabling certain sites. That has some pros to it. And there's also issues of equity because in that, if you get the new smartphone and I have the old one that's three generations ago, there's this almost class divide that can happen in equity issues when some kids don't have both the access at school or at home to the fanciest and the best and the fastest. It's, it's the whole thing all over again, isn't it? Look at me, I've got the latest thing. It used to be about the clothes or the toys or whatever, and now it's I've got the latest smartphone and we're talking primary and high school kids. Yeah, so what some schools have done is they provide certain aspects of the techniques of the tools, even if they don't directly go to all the places that a smartphone might. If you need internet access with a tablet in their hand, every kid could have one. So there's some class sets and people can bring their own. That tends to level the divide. The real issue is, are teachers teaching to take advantage of it? And I think that's where some parents and even some uni students would say, I've got this laptop here, but what are you doing? You're still just lecturing to me. So implied in the new technology are two things. One is we have to teach effectively to use it, and we have to teach kids kids to use it well. Just because you know how to play Pokemon Go doesn't really mean that you know how to do proper research on the internet. And there's an ethical component we have to teach side by side with kids about what not to do. Because if it has a camera and a recording device, you can be doing things that are totally illegal or inappropriate. And where you might go on the internet could also be the wrong places. And when you're eight or nine years old, you don't know that. You have to be taught that. So that's an issue that has to go side by side. So teacher preparation and the ethical training and actually technology training for kids have to go alongside of not just handing them a phone and saying, figure it out. They'll figure it out, but what they're downloading may be things we just actually don't want them to download. A couple of things on that. Firstly, Pokemon Go, that is so 2016. <laughs> so you <laughs> you haven't seen the new age. version. <laughs> okay. But with all of that background ethical training as well, that is a great life lesson. So I think that if schools are able to jump on board with this and really get a handle on how to teach kids to be safe and what not to look for and, and what to be seen as dangerous... Um, this can only be good for their, their broader lives. And I see what some schools have done is to say that the power button is in the off position until we're using it. So it's not just constantly on. What you said about your good niece, with that. <laughs> which your niece is, so, is that it's on all the time. And there are many kids running around where screen time is way too excessive at actually rewiring how they think. It becomes a habit, almost an addiction. And we've got to make sure kids do the proper other components, like actually physically reading a book with the textile component of that, where you're actually turning pages, there are studies emerging which show much more retention and cognition around actually 
touching and feeling a proper book. doesn't mean a book online is bad. It just means only being online is probably as counterproductive as it is positive. And we ought to have teachers figure out ways then that the strategies don't always mean you're taking that away from a kid, another discipline. G give me your phone. Give me your phone. So we have to find ways to balance it. But for schools holding back, we've got to get way past that. These are remarkable world headquarters in kids' hands. So we've got to enable it, but we have to do those three or four things alongside of it or we'll just be disciplining kids for using what we ask them to use. Finally, I have to think back to many of my high school teachers when we were having the calculator and they would say, um, you have to work out how to do this maths problem in your head. Well, when you get out in the real world, you won't have a calculator with you. Ha ha to them. <laughs> we certainly will. John, thank you, you know, for your time this morning. Thanks. Nice to see you. And we'll catch you next time at 2NURFM 103.7.